Hello, good evening. Welcome to Bars and Bells, our virtual studio. My name is Lauren. This is Ian. I had so many names for you, but we'll just go with Ian. Tonight is our beginner body weight and bar, sorry, body weight and bell class. So you can have this kettlebell to use at home. If you don't have one yourself, you can have an imaginary one. Let's get started with some warming up our feet and our head neck, and then we'll move into what we've been working on, which is our uh, heavy holds in various places, and even some single leg work today. Starting standing up tall, I'd like you to take one leg or foot and place it out in front, basically so it's in line with your big toe in a heel strike. Push your heel down, push weight into that front heel for three, two, push off that heel, Put the foot down, switch. Other heel comes forward about in line with that toe. Push some weight into heels, waking it up. Hopefully you're in bare or sock feet here. Push back. Go back to your first leg. Hit the heel again, gently, but hit the heel. Roll through the outside of the foot. Try to place only that lateral border on the foot down. And then your baby toe tries to hit. Your ring toe. Your middle toe your index toe, and then your thumb toe. As you do that, shift your weight to the front foot, gently bending through that back foot. <clears throat> and then push off your back foot, heel strike, heel. There's a comment there, could you see it? Heel, get to the lateral border of the foot, baby, ring, middle, Big toe, push through that back foot, little bit of a bend. Let's do that two more times. Heel, articulate through the lateral aspect of the foot into the toes. Keep that arch off the floor. Bend back foot, push through, last time. Heel, lateral aspect of the foot. Gently bend that back foot. Great, shaking it out. Can your ankles be strong like that, but also be floppy moppy? Floppy fish, I should say. Oops. Don't want Oops. poor moppy. All right, standing up tall, a little head neck here. Start with computer head or texting head, which is chin force forward like a chicken neck. Now take your hand and smush your face straight back, making triple chins. Repeat, chicken neck, glide straight forward, glide straight back, Smushing your chin, stacking your head. With that head stacked, rotate on it. Gently try to rotate, looking over the shoulder. Back to center. Rotate the other direction. Looking over that shoulder, making sure your shoulders don't move. Back to center. One last time. Rotating. Can you get further on one side than the other? Pulling back to center, or do they both feel just as great? And center. Let's go back to our feet again. Clear a little pathway in front. Take a heel strike. Roll through the outside of that foot, gripping with the arch. I want you to start shifting weight up into two feet. Right here, we're between two feet. Our knees are straight. Our butts squeeze. Keep your knees straight. Slow descent down. Nice. Push off your back foot, heel strike through. Roll through the foot, up to two. Ian's showing a modified position or hanging onto a counter if you need a little balance. Slow descent, push off back foot, heel strike. Roll through up to both. If you're finding this hard, maybe your steps are too wide. Narrow steps. Slow descent, last time, bend, push off. Heel rolls up, two feet, straight knees descend, and relax. Floppy, floppy, floppy. Great. Head neck again. We're going to do some circles. This time, I'd like you to rotate one direction. From there, your chin is going to come down towards your armpit. Scrape across your collarbone and pull to center, and then pull your head back on straight. Repeat the other direction. Rotate over the other shoulder, chin towards armpit, 
scrapes along the collarbone to center, head goes on straight. Now, gently towards the ceiling with nose, draw a circle with your nose towards that shoulder. So you'll be back to that rotation position and then pull your head back to center. Nose to the ceiling. Scrape your nose along the ceiling towards the far corner or wall. You're in that rotation. Pull your head back to center. Woo, great. One more set of walks here. It's gonna be a little bit more advanced than the last one, but you can go back and revisit the last one if we need to. Heel, roll through to two feet. Right here, stay or think about shifting your weight into your front leg to fully stay on that front foot for three, two. Put the back foot down again. Slow descend, straight knees down. Step through that back foot, heel roll up to double toes. Think about transferring your weight to your front foot. Hold if you are for three, two. Foot goes back down, straight knees descend. Two more, push off the back foot, heel, roll through to two toes, transfer weight to the front foot, two feet, slow descend, last time to be even, off the front, sorry, push off the back leg, heel, toe, roll up to two, think about transferring load to the front foot, hold, Put the back foot down between two feet, slowly descend. Great, shake that out. Hopefully your feet and ankles are fired up. Wired up. Fired, wired. All right, let's get to some ribs and hips here. Take your arms out to the side, your legs wider, your feet wider than hip width. Take your rib cage and slide it across your body and then pull to center and slide your rib cage across your body and pull. Noticing as I'm doing this, my arms are staying parallel with the floor and I'm not dipping or twisting like a little teapot. And back to center. Bring your arms in. Let's add a little rotation. I'm gonna rotate towards my right. Let's all rotate to our right. Hips always stay forward. Hips are forward. Let's add our upper body rotation to your right. Check out that your head neck isn't rotating too much further than your body. Now take your right hip and gently push it forward a bit more so it doesn't twist back. Take a little lateral bend off that back corner shoulder. So laterally bend to that back corner, pull yourself up. Try to rotate a bit more to the right. Keep that right hip pushing forward. Bend again off that back corner. Come up from that bend and then pull yourself back to center. Other side, rotate to your left. Left hip still pushes forward. Side bend or back bend off that back corner. Pull self up tall. Try to rotate further. Left hip pushes forward. Back or side bend off that back corner. Pull yourself up tall. And then use your core to pull back to center. And relax. No punching yourself necessary, but a good check in here and there. Same with your feet slightly wider than hips. Place your hands on your hips. Let's kick it some old school hip circles. Side, back around, side, and front. It's like you're doing a little hula hoop in here, but nice and slow hulas. Keeping those knees straight, trying to draw nice circles. As you do this, I did about three one way, let's go three the other way. As you do this, pay attention to your feet and your toes. Are your toes still gripping the floor? Are your arches still working? What's funny, Ian? They weren't. I know, your toes are coming up. I could feel mine too. And last one of the three. Great. All right, let's get into some kettlebell business here. We're gonna come to the floor and either working with your imaginary kettlebell or a light bell of your choice, we're gonna work through our firing range holds as well as some arm bars. If that's new language, that's okay. Just follow along. Take your right arm, cross it across your chest. This is your first get up of the day. Start remembering these moves. 
Leg you can touch, drop back lunge, control descent. Front foot opens. Chop hip, rotate, hand finds floor. Shift your weight over that hand. Lifting that back leg to sweep through. Find your elbow with a nice proud shoulder, no sloppy shoulders, and push away from that to come to your back. Great. From here, we're gonna do our, I'm gonna go this way. Start with our firing range hold. This is a great place before an arm bar. So if you've never used your kettlebell like this, you're gonna roll onto your side to cuddle. We call this the cuddle. I'd suggest using a pretty light bell for this first time. If you know what you're doing, use the appropriate weight. Bottom hand goes in to your handle. Top hand cuddles your bottom hand. Two hands keep the bell close to your body as you roll to your back. Now take both hands and press that kettlebell straight up so your arm is straight. Removing the second hand, just that assist hand, place that arm on the floor beside you. First, let's pay attention to our arms and then we'll check out our legs. Look at your hand. Is your wrist nice and straight and strong? If you see a bend at your wrist, make it not bent. <laughs> Straighten your elbow. Your wrist is over top of your elbow. Your elbow is over top of your shoulder. Your shoulders pulled down into its armpit, nice and engaged. Our abs are braced. If we could be picky with our legs, the leg that's bent is the same as the arm that has the bell. The other leg is out straight, other arm heavy on the floor. Hold for about three, two, two hands on bell. Hold the bell down, keeping your forearm vertical. And then once your elbow hits the floor, cuddle over. Gently let go. Now you move around the bell, don't, or the bell moves her. You move around the bell. Don't move the bell over your body is the bottom line. Cuddle, same thing on the other side. Maybe you noticed that you were trying to work for some shoulder stability and your arm was a little bit dit, 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 dit. That's great. It's working. Keep with that, with that. All right, cuddle on your side. Bottom hand grips. Top hand cuddles. Two-handed roll. Two-handed press. Let go with that second hand when you feel ready. Look at your wrist. Is it straight and strong? Is it over top of your elbow? Your elbow is over top of your shoulder. Shoulders packed out of your ear. Abs braced. Same foot that has the same leg that has the bell is bent. Other leg heavy on the floor. Everything's packed. Maybe, hmm, I could do my first move in my get up with this bell. No, I couldn't move anywhere. These are some conversations you're having. Two hands on the bell, pull the bell down, cuddle to the floor. All right, roll back to your back. We'll fire up our glutes and then we'll do that something similar again. On my back here, oh, chin tucked, feet flat on the floor, knees bent. Arms at your side for now. Actually, place your hands on your buttocks, your own buttocks. Now, grip the floor with those feet again and those toes. Start pushing energy down into the floor that causes your butt to squeeze, both glutes to squeeze. So push down, grip the floor, and fire up both cheeks. Your hips haven't even left the floor yet. Tap them. Tip, tap, tip, tap, and then relax. Do that again. Grip the floor, drive down, start squeezing both cheeks. Now you've squeezed both cheeks so much they're gonna start to extend up off the floor. This is your glute bridge or your hip bridge here. Squeeze your butt really tight, brace your abs. I could come through the screen and if I tried to move you, you wouldn't move. Hold for three, two. Now you're gonna come down but you're gonna articulate down from the very top. So my bra is gonna touch and then my vertebrae just below my bra and then the back side of my belly button is gonna touch before my low back. My low back is touching and then my tail. Relax, let's do that again. Drive your feet heavy into the floor. Fire up cheeks. Start rolling, peeling yourself up away from the floor to your high bridge. Squeeze glutes, brace abs. Don't let me move you for three, two, one. Articulate down from the top. Slowly, imagining you could put one vertebrae down at a time. Imagine, just imagine and relax. Whew. Let's get back to our cuddle 
and this time an arm bar. If you feel comfortable moving under the load that you had the last time, then I suggest you try this. If you don't feel comfortable moving under the load, I suggest you either put that load down and try this body weight, or you do what we just did the last time, just holding that firing range. We're gonna do an arm bar, which is great for upper body mobility. It starts the same. Cuddle, two hands on your belt, roll to your back, two-handed press. Bend, bend the leg that is the same as the kettlebell arm. So that's for me, my right leg and my right arm. My left leg is out nice and straight and my left arm comes overhead. That's my empty arm. Maybe I just stay here. If I want more, I'm gonna drive into the floor with that right foot and hip and extend to push onto my side. My head's gonna rest on my arm. My hips are gonna stack and my knee is gonna come over, but my foot is gonna hook the back of my knee here. Check a couple things out. Is your shoulder packed, your elbow straight, your wrist straight, your head resting? Maybe you stay here. If you'd like to add more, we unhook that foot and try to work that knee away from center as we roll our hips towards the floor, but that upper body stays stacked. And we get a nice rotation ring out kind of stretch here. If you're here, try not looking at your bell, make that shoulder really work. Slowly bring your hips back to stacked. Foot finds the floor behind you. Roll to your back. Two hands on bell. Pull bell down. Cuddle. Let go. Turn around other side. Arm bars are so great for so many reasons. Some T-spine rotation, some shoulder mobility, some breathing. So let's do the other side. Cuddle, two hands, roll to your back, two-handed press. That same leg is bent, the other arm goes overhead, the other leg is nice and straight, reaching nice and long. Use your hip extension by pushing into the floor, rolling yourself onto your side. Hook that foot in the back of the knee, woo! Knee finds the floor. Hips are stacked, heads resting, wrist straight, elbow straight, shoulder packed. Maybe add more by reaching that leg hip away from you. Breathe, ring yourself out here. And one more, try not to look at your bell with your eyes. Slowly come back to stack tip. Foot finds the floor behind you. Control to your back. Two hands, pull bell down, cuddle. Whew. Let's, don't go far. We're gonna do one more thing from down here. A plank, plank, plank. Plank, 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 plank. All right, get into this position. Onto your stomach, fists. Elbows under shoulders. Tuck your toes. You can either do this from your knees or your toes. I'm going to go right up to my toes. The knees is a little bit of a more modified position. Both are fine. Tuck hips. Squeeze butt. Either lifting to knees or to toes. Everything's in line. Make fists. Pull your elbows towards your knees, but don't move anything. Squeeze your butt. Brace your abs. If I came through, I couldn't push you over. Hold. Three. Two, knees come down, relax back up into that extension again. One more time. I couldn't move you if I tried. Ready, toes tuck, tuck hips, start bracing core, squeeze glutes, lift hips up off the floor, fists, abs, butt, squeeze, pull, five, four, three, two, soft knee landing, Flip over to your back again. Oh, we have to stand up, be our get up here. Cross that left arm across our chest this time. Right arm out to the side, right leg heavy. Drive into the floor, extend, pull to elbow. Find your hand. Lift, sweep. Hand leaves floor. Front foot moves. Both legs come up together. Shake it out, shake it out. Grab a quick sip. We're gonna get into, sorry, jewelry drama. Deadlifts, both single legs and two legs and holding that bell again in our various places. 
So again, with or without a bell, if it's imaginary, place it on the floor between your feet. Your hips, sorry, your feet are about slightly wider than hips. Rock back and forth, find a nice comfortable stance. Standing tall, just check in here. Squeeze your butt, brace your abs, hold it tight. <sighs> Relax a little bit, but keep your abs braced. Reach your hips back, chopping hips back. Hands just slide down your legs this time. I want your hands on your shins right now. Now look down. Are your shins perpendicular or vertical to the floor? Hands should be pointed down towards the floor. Shoulders packed, abs are braced. You're gonna stand up by driving your hips through to tall. Great, let's do that again. Chop your hips, hands slide down. They can either stay on your shins or move towards the kettlebell handle. If you're on the handle, grip, pack your shoulders, grip with your toes too and your arches. Inhale, brace your abs, pretend to lift your 500 pound load, let it go, up with it. One more time, chop hips, maybe lift this time if you'd like. Hinge, grip bell, pack shoulders. Inhale, preload and then hup, up as one unit. Butts, abs, punches everywhere. Keep that brace as you hinge. Bell goes right back down to where you got it between your feet. Let go, up with out. Cool. We're now gonna hold our kettlebell in what's called a suitcase position. So actually don't move, stay exactly where you are. We're going to, we can do this together. Chop our hips. Grip our bell, but with, with two hands actually. Take two hands on the bell, pack your shoulders, brace, lift with two hands. Place a nice grip with just one hand so you could get rid of one hand. Move that bell to the side of your body, narrowing your stance slightly. Bell is beside me, like I'm carrying a suitcase. If I was lazy through the airport carrying my suitcase, I'd be like this, but I'm not lazy. Pull on that far side, brace those abs, keep that shoulder up and back to keep the bell off your body. Weights even in both feet. Hold for five more seconds. Five, four, three, Two, pull the bell to center, two hands on the bell, step, hinge, up without. Same thing, other side. Hinge to grip bell, two hands, majority of the other hand on the bell, pack shoulders, inhale, brace to lift, step, move the bell to the other side. Weights even in both feet. We're not lazy, we're pulling ourselves up tall with this other side obliques. Abs are braced, but squeezed. Weight between both feet, shoulder up and back. Hold for five, four, three, two. Pull the bell to front, two hands, hinge. Bell goes down, up without. All right, I'd like to explore a single leg deadlift today and then do another hold, deciding which way to face. You don't even have to move. We're still over top of our bell in our deadlift position. <laughs> Stand tall. We're going to start with our two-legged deadlift. Hinge at the hips. Now I'd like you to pick a leg and transfer your weight to that leg. The leg that you're off transferring, reach it long behind you. What you should still notice is that shin of the front leg is still vertical or perpendicular to the floor. Now to stand up, you're going to load up that glute. Drive your hip and leg all the way through to tall. Put that foot down. Same thing, other side. Tall, tall. Chop hips, hinge. Transfer your weight to the other leg. Reach long with that back leg. Load up glute. Stand up. Drive hips through. Squeeze cheeks. One more time each side. Hinge. Transfer weight to a single leg. That offload leg reaches behind you nice and long. Stand up by driving your hip through, fully squeeze glute. Last time, chop hinge. Transfer weight. Reach along out the back leg. Up because your hip drives through. Boom. And relax. All right. We have a fun carry or hold today called a rack position. A rack position is a position, I'll show you. Hinge, one hand, two hand, pull, rack hold. 
In this position, we think about keeping our forearm vertical again to the floor. This is the position we can one day press out of. Uh, that's a full press. One day, we can actually do some cleans to that position. And for today, we can just hold our heavy bell in this position. Notice this is good, lazy, good, lazy, good, two hands down. So let's walk ourselves through a clean. If you don't have um, a kettlebell, you could use a dumbbell in a similar sort of way, or there you go, imaginary one. Hinge, one hand goes through, second hand cuddles on top. You're gonna think about pulling this straight up your body like you're doing up the zipper of your jacket. Pull, zip up your jacket, bell comes around to the first hand side. I'm gonna take my top hand away. Now look down or look in a mirror. Is your forearm vertical? Is your wrist nice and straight or do you have ouchy, ouchy wrist? Good wrist, ouchy, good. Now it's beside you. Bell is resting only on your forearm, not on your bicep. It's also not resting on your chest here. Both butts are squeezed, weights even in both feet. Take your second cuddle hand, two hands on, unzip your jacket, put it down, up without. Same thing other side, right over top of your bell. Hinge, one hand grips, that's the side it's going to. Second hand cuddles. Pull, zip up your jacket, bell comes around, vertical, strong wrist, butt squeezed, abs braced, weights even in both feet. Hips are underneath you, not jutting out to the side. Three, two, two hands, hinge, bell goes down, up without. Great, let's just, I'm just gonna place this off to the side using my great hinge here. Hingey hinge. I'd like to finish with one get up on each side today. Remembering to get up is one day an overhead loaded position, but for today we're just gonna put that arm across our chest as we work on our overhead strength and mobility. Leg you can touch, step back, control, lunge down. Front foot opens. Chop hip, hinge, and rotate. Hand finds the floor. Once your hand finds the floor, shift that weight over so your shoulder's over top of your wrist. You're gonna lift your back leg and sweep it through. From here, find your elbow. Keep that shoulder proud, not dumpy on the beach. Push away from your elbow as you come to your back. Use your hip extension, pushing that foot into the floor. Drive and pull on your elbow. Find your hand. Lift and sweep that knee back under. Hand leaves the floor, front foot moves, two legs to help you hop. Cross that other arm, step back lunge, controlled descent, front foot opens, chop, rotate hinge, back leg sweeps through to your elbow, control to your back. And we're up again. Four, hip extension, pull to your hand. Lift, sweep. Hand leaves floor, front foot moves, both legs up. Shake it up. Well, that was just a great time. I hope you learned some things or reviewed some things. Check out our YouTube channel. We have lots more detailed videos about get ups and cleans and presses and the basics. The, the basics really just everything if you haven't checked out our membership yet www.barsandbells.com membership is available <laughs> become dash uh, dash member. yeah become really dash uh, dash member anyway check us out on youtube and on our website thanks for joining us today yeah, my name's lauren to, great to see new people you know Ooh, new lauren, people uh, new today. oh how fun so thank you very much Laura's thank you I'm on camera. You, oh. Lauren was trying to get my attention earlier, and it's just nice to see a, a new face. So welcome to the studio. Yeah. Thank you for joining. If you have any questions, let us know. We'll do it again next week, same time, same place. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. We'll be back.